in this problem I would like us to rank the four cases shown A through D in terms of the largest to the sm from the smallest to the largest in terms of the magnitude of the acceleration given to an object, the blue box in this case, uh, the acceleration specifically in the horizontal direction. In this problem, the largest acceleration is actually given to answer the box in answer A, and that's because there are two forces acting in each case, but and the net force is the vector sum of these two forces. But in this case, both the three newton and the five newton force are working together because the arrows, the direction of these two forces, are both to the right. And so both the three newtons and the five newtons are in the horizontal direction, and the net force in the horizontal direction will be eight newtons. And we know that acceleration and force are related through, the, through Newton's second law. The second largest force will come in answer C because both the, three, the five newton force and the three newton force are both acting to the right, although the three newton force is at somewhat of an angle. There's an angle theta here. And as a result, the horizontal component of that three newton vector will only be this much. So it'll be three newtons times the cosine of that angle. So it's less than the sum straight up of three and five, but rather it's some number uh, between five and eight. So it's less than answer A, but still more than five newtons. The third largest acceleration in the horizontal direction will come in answer D. In this case, the five newton force is again pulling to the right. There's a three newton force in this case, but it's pulling straight up. And so this does nothing. in the horizontal direction. So in this case, the net force in the horizontal direction is just five newtons. Answer B has the smallest force because, as, and as a result, the smallest acceleration in the horizontal direction, because in this case, the five newtons and the three newtons pull in opposite directions, so the net force to the right has a magnitude of just two newtons. So A has a magnitude of five newtons, oh, excuse me, eight newtons. C has a magnitude greater than five newtons but less than eight. D has five newtons and B is only two newtons. Suppose we have a force F that's being applied to a frictionless car, which is initially at rest, and it's being done for a certain time interval. At the end of this process, we cease pulling with force F, and we expect now to move at constant speed, because by Newton's first law, an object that's in motion already will tend to stay in motion. Well, let's suppose that we want to achieve the same final speed but only applying half the force that we originally applied, so one half of F. For how long would one have to push on this car with this uh, lesser force of one half F? Would it be four times as long, twice as long, the same time, half as long, or a quarter of the original time? Well, the answer is that it would have to be pu pulled or pushed with a, a, this reduced force of half F or twice as long. Why is that? The velocity is a function of time. If we remember from kinematics, it depends on the initial velocity and the acceleration times time. If we say that we're starting from rest, then the initial velocity is zero. And so our final velocity is just the acceleration in the x direction times time. And by Newton's second law, we're going to substitute that the acceleration of the x-direction is just force over mass. 
So if this number is to be half as big, then in order to have the same VF, I need to push for twice as much time so that the one half will cancel the two. Which is sort of intuitive that if you're not going to push as hard, you have to push longer. Consider two carts, each initially at rest, and each being pushed with an identical force, capital F, for an identical time of delta T. Let's suppose that the, the mass here on the left, capital M, is twice as heavy, or twice as large, as this mass, little m. If I'm doing this problem as exactly as I've read it, then how would the f speed, the final speed, of the smaller mass be compared to the speed of the bigger mass? Would it be a quarter as large, a half as large, the same, twice the speed, or four times the speed of the larger mass? The answer is that it would be twice the speed. To see that, I again go back to our expression that the velocity as a function of time is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Again, the initial velocity is assumed to be zero in this problem, and so we just have that velocity is acceleration times time. And if I insert for what is the acceleration, it's force divided by mass. then if this is half of the bigger mass, I'm still multiplying by time, then this final speed for the small mass will be a factor of two because I'll be divided by a half, twice as much as the speed of the bigger object which is kind of intuitive if I'm pushing on a really heavy thing, it's hard to get it to move fast. And if I'm pushing on a small thing, it seems relatively easy to get it to move fast. 